Hello, hello, it's, it's lovely to be here with you. Um, I, what I'd like to do, uh, oh yeah, I'm Paul O'Mahony, I live in Cork, Ireland, I'm a poet, and the reason I'm making this particular video is that I would like to encourage you to write poetry. Yep, that's my mission, help you to write poetry, at least those of you who could be persuaded <laughs> and some people have written poetry long time ago haven't written any for ages and it's really for people who are not in the habit of writing poetry every week or every day or something like that so i'm going to start with the big question, what is poetry? Well, you know, I brought some poetry books with me and I'm going to use them uh, during the uh, video. But uh, it's very simple what poetry is uh, and it's possible to complicate it. Poetry is uh, different from prose in that when you open a novel or you open a book of prose, you're going to find that the words fill the line. And in Poetry, the first thing you're going to recognize is that you look at a piece of writing and it doesn't reach the end of the line. So it only goes so far and then the next line goes so far. So you'd recognize the shape of a poem very easily. There are some fancy shapes and indeed there's even one kind of poem which we won't talk about at all today, which looks like a piece of prose. But overall, I would think that you know what a poem looks like. The, the, the trouble with poetry is that there is a whole lot of thinking out there, and you may have got it at school, that poetry is the highest form of writing, that it's some sort of elevated plane, you know, written by angels or, you know, almost uh, superpowers. And that only the greatest people can write poetry. And indeed, if you decide, for example, I'm going to pick up a, a book of poems by Avan Boland. And you decide you're going to read that. And you read through it. It's likely to do your head in. You're likely to say to yourself, if you're just beginning to write poetry, oh my God, I couldn't write stuff like that. And let me tell you a little story. Uh, Sheikh, uh, one of the most famous poems of all begins with uh, I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills is a poem by an English guy called Wordsworth written in 19th century. But let me tell you, I've always found it encouraging to realise that the first line of that poem in the very first draft was I wandered lonely as a cow. Now, believe it or not, that so if you start with I wandered lonely as a cow and you end up with I wandered lonely as a cloud. Uh, something's happened. So poems can kind of start anywhere. Um, another guy you might, a person you might pick up to read, uh, Bukowski. Um, Charles Bukowski. Pretty uh, different kind of poet from Evan Boland. Don't read that. Uh, Seamus Heaney. Don't read that. But because they'll intimidate you. They, they'll get you thinking that, oh my God, I can't write like that. And what are the chances of starting to write a poem? And remember, all I'm saying is a poem is something that looks like a poem. What are the chances of you starting to write when you look at all these uh, poets who have references in there? They pick words you've never heard of before. Classical references. They put things together and you may have at school have got some good guidance in relation to to writing that says every sentence should have a verb in it a, an object and you shouldn't end the line with prepositions and uh, what's the one about uh, to 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 boldly go you shouldn't do things like that uh, all these things and so you come to a poet and you find that some poets have lines that have just a single word on them good lot of bits of poetry don't have verbs in them so therefore you know you might be thinking oh god this is all a bit uh, harsh uh, what am i going to do do uh, see there's excuse me i dropped it 
Do a read a collection of poems, an anthology. Do do that and read through it. And uh, there's loads of poems in this one, but there's even a chance you once got a present of a collection of poems, an anthology. Not one author, right? Now, my, my advice to you is don't read poems by any one author alone. But if you get a collection like this, you can always decide which ones you like and who you like. And then you can think of why do you like them and you've got to start. At least you know somebody who writes poetry that you like. And ideally, you'd find that you like several different ones. And, you know, some of them you might like because they're very good at doing rhymes and you love rhymes and it's, you know, it gets you going. Others might have no rhymes at all. Others could be really, really short poems. Others might be big, long poems with a story. But you will find what you like. Okay, you could then, and I'll leave it up to you, you could then copy the style. I know a guy in Australia who's a terrific um, explainer or encourager to people. Uh, his name is Jackson. And I think he has, he has a thing called The Poetry Show, which I highly recommend. If you Google it, you'll find it. But he has set out over a few years to get people to write poetry, to introduce them to poetry. And one of the things he says, and I think it's a very sensible thing, is you can copy the style, the structure. You know, some poems have bits that are six lines long, followed by a bit that's so long. There's even a thing called a sonnet, which has got eight lines and then six lines and the last two lines rhyme. But all those kind of things, you can follow that. If you really want to find one book that is amusing and will educate you about all different kinds of poems, try this one. I'm going to actually read you what this guy says and then I'll tell you who it is. This, uh, this has got to be one of my favourite writers of all time. Now, this is not a poem and it's in the foreword to this book. Yeah, there's the book. I'll show you the front in a second. I have a dark and dreadful secret. I write poetry. That's the first line. This is an embarrassing confession for an adult to make. In their idle hours, Winston Churchill and Noel Coward painted. For fun and relaxation, Albert Einstein played the violin. Hemingway hunted, Agatha Christie gardened, James Joyce sang arias, and Nabokov chased butterflies. But poetry? And he goes on. I won't read you any more. It's a stunning uh, piece of uh, writing at the beginning about, you know, the relevance of poetry. And he, he, I'll just read you a tiny bit more. An adolescent girl may write poetry so long as it is securely locked up in her pink leatherette five-year diary. Suburban professionals are permitted to enter jolly pastiche competitions in The Spectator and New Statesman. At a pinch, a young man may be allowed to write a verse or two of dirty doggerel and leave it on a post-it note stuck to the fridge when he has forgotten to buy a Valentine card. This is... Stephen Fry, an ode less travelled, unlocking the poet within. Well, look, I'm not here to sell you books. I may be the son of a bookseller, but I am not here to sell you any books. But Stephen Fry, some of you will know him already. If you do know him already, my prediction is that you think he's fantastic. So what I'm really saying is that poetry is something that looks like a poem. See, there are so many different kinds of poems that any generalization I make about a poem, in fact, the only one I'll make about a prose is a collection of dive bomber, a collection of bombers coming to bomb your city and they release their bombs and half of them explode. Half of the bombs explode. They could do terrible things anyway, huh? Poetry is a collection of bombers going to bomb your city and every single one of them explodes.